Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some quick tips and sort of advanced shortcuts in Novel AI's Text Adventure Generator. Now there's a couple of things that make the Text Adventure Generator even more effective than it uh, used to be in the past, and that's the fact that we've got these lovely new presets and these lovely new AI models that work really, really, really well as far as uh, generating really compelling and interesting stories. The downside is, is that you have to remember that this text-based adventure module is only as smart as the story that it has written so far. So it's uh, one of those interesting things that creates some, you know, some ambiguity, to say the least. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a basic text-based adventure story. Uh, we're going to create ourselves a dungeon. We're going to run around the dungeon and kind of see how some of the different shortcuts actually work in here. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is uh, we want to establish what the text-based adventure story is going to be all about. So just like we do when we're writing a regular one, we can actually define what our authors is, what our tones are going to be, what our styles are. Now, for those of you familiar with this before, we can actually click up here and go, boop, switch over to this mode real quickly and just define it. So author, I'm not going to put an author here, but what you can do is you can define things like, what's the title going to be? Uh, the Haunted High School. You know, we're going to keep it nice and simple today. And then, of course, we'll go ahead and say a style. Uh, what's the best way to describe this? Creepy, horror, thriller, kind of keep it there. A verbose description you know, things like that. And then, of course, we can come in here and type in tags, which is anything that we want to see kind of inside of our story or other elements that we like to borrow here. Now, when we're working with this, uh, we have to kind of keep in the back of our heads that our tags are basically going to be things that kind of show up. Because remember, this is always going to be at the top of our context here. So if we don't want to do something like a uh, ghost student, uh, we want to do mystery, we could uh, define our you know protagonist's features or details or anything along those lines at this point. It's completely up to us kind of how we want to sort of sneak this in here. Uh, I could say sleuth, I could say noir, anything along those lines. Now, once I've generated my title, my uh, little handy dandy stuff with my style as well as uh, my ghost, all I'm going to do is grab this. I'm just going to chuck it right into the memory. Now, for those of you who remember how well we've discussed things, how context works, if we were to go run over to the current context, you will notice that all these elements are now going to be shoved at the top of our text-based adventure here. That's good news for us because uh, that means all this content is always going to be referred back to no matter where we are and how long our adventure itself gets. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to come down here and hit Ensure and Completion After Start. The reason we want to use this here is it's going to make sure that when we do type something in, it's going to give you something that's going to be a length that's appropriate for that particular component there. Everything else is uh, looking pretty good. Now, there's a couple different things we can do here. Uh, some people, what they do is they like to just kind of roll with it, kind of a thing like that. So we could actually come in here and just uh, switch back to adventure mode, press uh, control, uh, control and enter, or we could just click on the arrow and see what happens. Now, notice here, because we established some of those different titles and those different tags, it's starting to give us some cool little ideas here. You know, we have the loops before you one. So, like, again, it's already rolling into a pretty nice story here. Of course, the doors are left in the walls, no glass in the windows, no electricity or plumbing. The vandals have carried off much of the wooden trim and most of the lockers and chairs. I mean, what a perfect setup here. I mean, how could you make this better kind of a thing? Well, that's when we go borrow our old friend ChatGPT here. Now, one of the interesting things we can do is we can actually define things within the universe or within the adventure that can come out multiple times. So, for example, here, I want to go ahead and get some rooms for a high school, and it'll just kind of let that one run. And what it'll do, it'll generate some quick little ideas that we could use. Now, I know what you're probably thinking here. You're thinking, uh, you're probably just going to grab this whole thing and uh, toss it into one lore book entry. Um, not quite. Uh, what we're actually going to do is uh, toss this into several lore book entries that we can go back and actually edit as things change in our story. Let's do that now. All right, looking pretty good. Now, there's a couple little things here that you have to kind of be mindful of when you're working with any of these lore books. Uh, one thing that's really, really cool is we can actually generate as we go. And uh, the other thing you want to keep in mind is whenever you're working with any lore book entry with these, you have to keep that, uh, whatever the name of the item is, you have to make sure you include that in the actual description here. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize that particular context. Now, one of the really cool things here is this is a great place for you to sneak something in here. Uh, you know, for example, it contains dusty keyboards, um, there is a strange coldness in the air here. So now we've uh, kind of set ourselves up for a little bit later on if uh, there's a particular item we want to grab. But we have to keep in mind that if we do grab that item, we probably want to run back in here and actually remove that item as well so that we don't cause any issues later on when we're generating a story. Now keep in mind, you can put anything in here. Uh, you can put what's in your backpack. You can you know, describe your character. Basically anything that you'd like to do here. So now that that's all been established, um, we actually have our rooms kind of ready to go. Now, the traditional way that we navigate around this, and again, there's different philosophies depending on kind of how you want to look around this and not sort of experiment with it. But the most classic method is actually to go ahead and use your directional directions. Uh, for example, going north, uh, going east, going south, going west. 
Now, one of the things that makes this very interesting is this box here is considered to be not your character's actions, it's considered to be the player's actions. You're sitting there saying, what does that mean? So for example, um, look around. Now, if I press enter, it says you look around. This is the equivalent of the command that I'm sending to my story. The actual story is what you're gonna see right here. So you'll notice it doesn't say anything about me looking around. It simply continues the story right where it left off. You wanna think about this another way. This is essentially the context that it's establishing for what's gonna happen next in our particular story here. Now you'll see here, apart from the main entrance, there are three doors. The one straight opens to the auditorium, the one to the left to the back stairs, down to the basement to the right, the principal's office is propped open. Notice it went into our lore book and stole some cool ideas out of it. If we actually go to our last context here, you can see how it's starting to grab a couple of those little pieces here and there, which is actually really, really cool because now that it's seen itself, it knows that that is in that place. Now there are different ways to control direction inside these kinds of games. So one thing we could do, of course, is we could actually, like I was mentioning, use the cardinal directions. For example, if I put the letter N, that's the equivalent of my player saying, I'd like to proceed north. So it'll actually say, boop, and it'll go ahead and try to pick what north means. North generally means what's in front of you. So if you notice here, uh, the auditorium is dominated by an enormous stage flanked by the red dusty curtains, rows of theater seats, you know, run down the wall. Now, the cool thing is if I look at my last context here, you'll notice that it's picked up these components there and it's actually grabbed them and tossed them directly in. Now, there are other commands that we can use that we have handy dandy shortcuts for. Uh, for example, if I wanted to go south, notice it took me to the principal's office. It didn't take me into the room I just was. Now, conventional adventure games, so when you go north, going south should theoretically take you back the other way. But notice that it knew from before that the principal's office was behind you. So that's kind of an interesting little thing here. So uh, now we've got ourselves a little bit of an adventure starting in here. Is It's kind of interesting because I'm more, <laughs> well, okay, where are we going? Kind of a thing like that. Now, what's kind of fun here, and this is what I really enjoy, is if I were to come back up here and say, you go north, Let's go back this up all the way. Let's say I actually say um, a walk into the auditorium. Now remember, this is the player command. This is not the character command. The character is in here. Now notice, you step into the creaky wood floor of the auditorium. In the dim light, the dusty red seats seem to loom out at you as if they'd just been vacated by some unseen audience. Apart from the faint creak of the floor beneath your feet, the building is totally silent. Now, what makes this kind of fun here is both of those techniques are perfectly viable. This one's going to give us a lot more control as to where we're going to go and what we're going to see, whereas directions is going to create a little bit of that kind of chaos. Now, what's really, really interesting here is you have a couple other shortcuts. Uh, one thing I could do, for example, is I could actually look around. And now to do that, we could literally say, you look around, or if you prefer, you can just hit the letter L. Now, when you hit the letter L, just kind of look around, kind of a thing like that. Uh, piled into the corner, it was stolen or burned by vandals. And again, nice little reference here because we're just going back up to our original context there that was up at the tippy top. And notice there's our velvet seats, uh, the ones that we generated when we generated the components in the actual log book or lore book itself, which is actually a lot of fun. So there's other things we could do too to make our tales a little bit easier. Uh, let's say, um, uh, let's see, make it really, um, you see, we'll just go ahead and edit the story uh, um, really quickly. And what could be a fun thing to find into an organ? Uh, let's see, an old drumstick. Old decaying drumstick sitting on the floor. Floor. It was once used by a drummer in the marching band. Now, the cool thing here is I can actually examine. So I can actually press X and I could say the drumstick. Now notice, it'll actually say examine. Now notice a little bit here, it looks like a normal drumstick, a little bit worse for wear. So now one of the cool things here is I can actually take the drumstick. Now notice it says taken and on it automatically, of course, I'll continue my story and says uh, we leave the auditorium. Now, not knowing where our story is going to go here, we could obviously go in a lot of different directions with this, but we got to kind of play with it a little bit. Now, we've left the auditorium. Now, check out this. If I press I now, ah, that's short for inventory. It'll say exactly what it is we're carrying. Now, one of the fun things you could do here is you can actually have some fun with this. The digital camera. Now, notice it has these weird little quotes around it because it probably didn't recognize it right away. All right, so let's go ahead and now walk to the principal's office. Nice, and I am place how I read. So of course we can examine nameplate. Ah, and Masterson. Then I can go look at my inventory again. Notice my inventory now tells me I have a digital camera, a drumstick, and a piece of paper because of the way I established that in the beginning. 
Now, one of the really, really cool things you could do with inventory, of course, is you could actually put that into your memory if you needed to, so it doesn't forget. Now, don't be surprised if you start losing a little bit of, um, I guess I want to say accuracy to what's in your pockets. You know, if you're carrying out 16 ammunition and I fire eight, don't be surprised if it says now I have 17 ammunition. No, that's just not how this works. Everything is a context element. So there's other things we could do too, which is actually a lot of fun. We actually have the ability to add wild cards to our actual functionality. And now the interesting thing with uh, wild cards is we can do a lot. You grab the, and I'm gonna press the asterisk button. So what's gonna happen now? Oh, 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 oh. So notice it automatically generated what the item that I grabbed was, uh, but it's not loose enough to pick it up. And I find that kind of interesting, sort of a thing like that. Now there's other things you could do too. I could just come in here and do a straight up asterisk. Now if you do that, of course, um, <laughs> the game's gonna go ahead and do one of those things. Remove from the disc. Ah, shucks. I hate when those ghosts uh, take those pesky nameplates from me, kind of a thing like that. Now there's other things we can do as well. Uh, we can actually do random actions, which I find a lot of fun. And that's done by simply doing a single exclamation point. I wouldn't do that, you jerk. <laughs> I don't, oh, oh boy, now it's starting to float menacingly above me and it vanishes in a flash of light. Oh boy, we're busted, we're busted, we're busted, we're busted. Now there are other lot of things here too. Uh, let's say for example here, a uh, woman in her middle 50s, 50s, helps if you spell it correctly, suddenly walks behind you, comes up behind you and asks, can I help you? Can I help you find something? Nice. Now, the cool thing here is you'll notice down here we have the do and we have the say button. There's actually a lot of choice here. In do mode, we don't just have to do an action. Uh, turn suddenly. Nice. Now, the cool thing is a lot of people would have to switch over here to say mode to go ahead and continue their saying, but you don't actually have to do that. You can actually say right here. You ask, who are you? Now, if I hit this, notice, even though that's an action finger quotes, it actually simulated that I'm actually talking here. And this is my school, is what are you doing here? Um, of course, we can keep rolling with the story. I am looking for evidence of why the school was abandoned. Oh, don't forget to uh, fix typos. Strange phenomena. Okay, apparently now the interesting thing here is remember this isn't a true text-based adventure. This is really a story that we're sticking our adventuring pieces into. And you'll notice right here that my character kept talking. Now one of the interesting things too is let's say we're in say mode here. After all this, we got to abandon. Then why are you still here? Now notice because I'm in say mode, it automatically tries to assume what my little question mark at the end is going to refer to. Now where it gets kind of fun here, which I think is I really graduated the class in 1936. Let's fix your typo. Uh, one of the interesting things that we actually get when we do stuff like this is we can actually have your character say something on their own. The other thing we can do is trigger actions. So if I were to go ahead and do this greater than sign, um, you give the ghost a high five. Now notice it left our saying mode and automatically went back to action mode, kind of a thing like that. <laughs> nice. Uh, the other option we have, which is a ton of fun, is we actually have the exclamation point option. Now the exclamation point option gives us two really, really interesting things. Uh, the first thing we can do is uh, we can pick something kind of random that doesn't fool me. The second thing we can do is we can order the other characters to do something instead. So watch this. I'm gonna do exclamation point. Uh, the former principal, uh, the woman uh, gives you a $20 bill, dollar bill from 1945. Now what happens here is it'll actually, <laughs> It actually shows that she gave you that particular item. Now, the interesting thing is that exclamation point is uh, really, really uh, useful because now we can actually use that as a way to sort of coerce the uh, action to actually happen a specific way. Now, there's a problem with the exclamation points. The woman's features soften as she realizes you two, you two were a student at the school. Now, if I do this, Now, this is interesting. Uh, notice uh, her, you know, we've changed the entire personality out of it. But you have to be careful, really, really, really careful with this exclamation point thing. Even though it's going to be triggering the story exactly, this little exclamation point is still there. Uh, that means that when you do trigger stuff later on, it's going to try to generate text that starts with an exclamation point. 
you can see where that becomes a problem. So whenever you are forcing the characters to do a specific thing, you can always make sure you run back there and uh, kind of delete those. The other thing, of course, you can do too, is you can just type it directly into the context up here, hit run, and then it'll actually go ahead and sort of a thing like that. As you can see, like the character has now changed. Both of those are fantastic ways to actually adjust something. Now, one of the kind of fun things about text-based adventures, which I think is really, really, really cool, is you have the ability to switch back to storyteller mode. And the reason this is so fascinating is you can see that now it deletes all those contextual points. And if I turn it back on, it'll automatically re-grab all those contextual points, kind of a thing like that that works. And you can see exactly why those are there, and you can actually see exactly what it is. So now if we wanted to, of course, uh, I can say leave the office and go to the chemistry lab. Uh-oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'll do L for look around. <laughs> and then our story starts to escalate. So hopefully this gives you uh, some new inspiration for playing with uh, the text-based adventures. You know, as I mess with it, I've gotten progressively better at sort of doing it. One thing that I find that works really, really efficiently is over here on the right where it says config preset, one of the things you can do is you can actually change the preset here. For example, if I switch to writer's demon, uh, this is gonna give us a very, very different response. And uh, that's one of the most fun things to do is to constantly be altering the different components here. But notice uh, my uh, text is changed a little bit here and it's got kind of a different style to it as it's generating. But one thing you have to remember as I've been saying all along is keep in mind what's in that context. Remember, I've got the chemistry bit, I've got the style, I've got the title, all those different components are in there. So as you start putting things in there and you start filling up your context, don't be surprised if things start to slide around differently. Enjoy.